All right, guys. So we're back with another video. So we're just gonna continue off um, from where we last ended. So let's go ahead and go back to our app.js file. Okay. Now, right now, uh, we are handling two routes, two locations for our server. Whenever the user visits slash, right, the main route, we're going to send hello. Whenever the user visits slash dashboard, we're going to send some JSON. Now, obviously, we can, you know, add a bunch of other routes. We can add another, you know, Discord route, and we can send an image if we wanted to. There's so many things that we can send, right? We can send Discord, for example, and if I save and go here, it's going to send me Discord in plain text. Now, as our application gets larger, you definitely don't want to keep all of your route handlers in the same file. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a router. Okay, so basically a router is like a mini portion of your entire Express application. And it what it does is it, it's responsible for handling a specific route and all other routes after it. Okay, so let's say, for example, uh, I wanted to create another route for dashboard, right? Because, you know, typically whenever you have a dashboard route, there are a bunch of other things that you can also access subsequent to dashboard, right? The dashboard might have a route uh, for, you know, um, posting feeds or like, you know, social media feeds, right? We might have slash dashboard slash uh, feeds. We might have specific feeds that we might want to, uh, you know, categorize. So, for example, if we have like, let's say a Twitter feed, we might want to separate that route from, let's say, a Facebook feed. So slash dashboard slash feeds slash Facebook. OK. And so these routes would pretty much send different feeds. So, for example, this route would send, you know, feed type. We can just say feed Twitter. OK, and this route over here slash dashboard slash feeds slash Facebook, we can send feed Facebook, right? And obviously these routes serve different information. So if I wanted to go to slash dashboard, okay, we're going to slash feeds slash Twitter. We're getting the Twitter feed. If I want to go to Facebook, it's going to give me the Facebook feed. So this is great because you can have different routes that go to different things. And obviously dashboard would be the main, would technically be the main route for these information, for these, uh, for these resources. Okay. And of course I can add as much as I wanted to, and you might have your dashboard aside from feeds, your dashboard might have other features such as, you know, settings. So you can do slash dashboard slash settings. And this would allow you to, you know, I mean, typically you, a dashboard, I mean, yeah, a dashboard might have some settings that you can configure such as, um, you know, enabling or disabling widgets, uh, setting the time or the weather and et cetera. Right. But the, the, but I'm not I'm not referring to like settings as in like user account settings that would typically have its own route. And, you know, now that I mentioned that we can have our own settings route. Right. So let's say if the user wanted to modify, you know, their account, they want to change their email, then we would have them visit this slash settings route and we would provide them an interface for them to interact with the database or not the database directly, but the API server. And then we can have them configure you know their emails passwords and whatever and this route over here would be handling those requests it wouldn't be a get request it would be a post re post request but i'll explain that when we get to it okay but hopefully this whole thing about routes makes sense and you can kind of see that you know we our code is starting to look a bit a little bit more uglier because we have just so many of the same things that look similar in the same file and these these uh these routes can do different things. Like you might need to call other uh, APIs. You might need to make other requests or do other things such as, you know, image processing or uh, reading files or uh, loading up, you know, something from a database. And the more stuff that you have in your code in your app.js file, it's just going to look uglier, right? It's kind of like how when we're developing our Discord bot, you don't want to have all of your commands inside one file, right? It's just going to look ugly. It's going to be harder to maintain. Okay, so what we're going to do to solve this issue is we're going to use something called a router. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything here. Whoops. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called routes in Express. So if you're new to Express, typically this is how you would want to set up the structure of your Express application. Okay. You want to have your main source folder. You want to have the app.js file. And then you want to have a subdirectory for routes. Okay. So let's go ahead and create, let's see, we're going to create a route called uh, auth.js because this is going to be responsible for authentication. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and say const, uh, let's do const router equals require express dot router parentheses. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm require express, but I'm referencing the router module, the router class, or it's really a function, but I'm referencing it and I'm calling that function. Okay. And this is going to initialize a router for us. This is actually equivalent to doing this. So if I wanted to do const express equals require express. Okay. Notice how we can just do const app equals express, but this time I want a router. So instead of doing express parentheses, we're going to do const router equals express dot router parentheses. But I wanted to save a line of code, so I just did this right over here. Okay, so now we have a router. We can basically do the same things that we're doing with the initial app, but with a router instead. So I can make a get request, right? I can make post requests. I can make deletes, puts, whatever I want. Same thing that works. Okay. And what this router, this auth.js router is going to be responsible for doing is it's going to it's going to be responsible for handling the slash off path. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to our code and let's just do module dot exports dot um, router because what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and uh, first let's just send a 200 or I'm sorry let's do threads dot status 200 so we're going to send a 200 to the front end or the browser sorry the client and now we're going to go inside our app.js file and we're going to do const auth route equals require dot slash routes slash auth. Okay. And what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and reference app and call the use function. So the use function is basically used for applying middlewares to our application. Okay. And I'll explain a little bit on what a middleware is in just one second. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say use slash auth. Okay. So I'm, I'm basically saying, Hey, look, express what I want our application to do is I want this slash auth path, this slash auth route to be handled with this auth route, which is pointing to this auth.js file. I wanted to reference this auth router, this, uh, yeah, this auth router. And if I save, now, if I go to, if I refresh, oh, wait, whoops, that was, uh, I do this. Um, what's going on here? We're getting an error. Well, not an error, but let's see. Um, core auth route require route slash auth. Let me make sure I save here. Oh, wait, I think I'm going to have to do this. One sec. Status dot send we'll do end okay this should be good okay yeah so there's it's not showing anything but we have a 200 we have a 200 uh, successful request but let's actually send something let's do res.json auth okay and let's just put a semicolon there and now if i save we're gonna get message auth status 200 okay and notice how this route is being handled with our router. Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, why isn't in this router.get, why isn't it slash auth? 
okay? That's because for this slash, this is the parent starting from the slash auth route, okay? So if I did, let's say for example, for this slash, okay? We don't need to add auth in front of it because if we did that, it would not be slash auth on localhost 3000. If I refreshed it, it's gonna say, cannot get auth. It would actually be slash auth auth, okay? So pretty much this itself is the parent of this entire router starting from this route. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's say if I wanted to have another route for let's say success, I could do res.json and I'm just gonna do message success status 200. Okay, so now when I wanna make a request to hit this endpoint, to hit this uh, route, I'm not gonna do localhost 3000 slash success, I'm gonna do localhost 3000 slash auth slash success. And there you go. So hopefully this all makes sense with routing. Okay, so let's get back to the middleware part. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is we're saying, hey look Express, I want you to handle this route with this router okay and basically middlewares are kind of like a middle layer that allow you to apply some sort of functions or some sort of you know uh processes before actually completing the request before actually doing anything else okay so you can kind of think of like a middle layer in the application sort of and we're going to do a lot of we're going to be using middle middleware a lot Okay, so don't worry so much about, you know, uh, the middleware aspect. Just understand what it is right now. And um, yeah. All right, so I think that's pretty much it with this video. Uh, we pretty much covered a lot with routing. So in the next video, we're actually going to get back to the main project and we're going to set up our routes for our Discord project. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.